So for those of you who were at the club on Friday, you probably saw a pretty unusual sight. Uh, our flagpole had the Almancia flag, the US flag, and then the Scottish flag. And so people were probably wondering why was that? And what it was is we had a young group of golfers here uh, from Dornock, Scotland for the uh, for the Moorcott Challenge. And they played Aaron Hills, Knollwood, and on Friday they played on Muncie, thus the flag. And they stayed at members' homes. Uh, they went down to the beach and enjoyed the community and just had a great time overall. And uh, this was a big deal. Um, a lot of the, it, Dornock's a small village, 1,400 people. And for these teenagers, it could be the only time in their entire lives that they were able to come to the United States to travel abroad. Uh, Scott Moorcott's father, Woody, was the visionary for this annual event. Uh, next year, we'll have some Onwentia players go play Royal Doorknock, uh, just like they did last year. Uh, but Scott runs the event now. And uh, Nick Papadakis, our pro in the back there, uh, he, he also <laughs> is sort of invaluable in helping out with all this. Um, so anyway, Scott, great to have you here tonight. He's going to tell us a lot more about the Moorcott Challenge, and uh, take it away. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, can you hear me okay, Julia? Okay. So I'm going to stand here because there's some people on Zoom. So I'm just going to stand back here um, if that's okay. But thank you all for coming and wanting to hear a little bit about this wonderful uh, exchange program and golf tournament that uh, my dad started. Um, so uh, I'll jump in real quick. I'm going to give you a little background about what the Morgan Challenge is about. It's Fundamentally, it's a culture exchange between the city, really, of or town of Dornock, and now here in Lake Forest. Uh, originally, uh, this program was juniors from uh, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, where my parents had lived for many years. Uh, so, but it, it basically started in 2005, and what happened was, and, and I don't think uh, you know this side of the story, Nick, but my father was playing with a, a gentleman named Jim Campbell, who at the time was what they call the junior convener at Royal Dornock. So he was a board member at the club whose responsibility was looking after the junior golf program. So it's a board position that they have, a little bit unique. I don't think we have something similar here. But my, my dad was playing golf with him. And at the end of the round, they went into the pub at the club and started talking. And Jim had explained that the juniors at Royal Dornock had been invited and asked to go play at Wingfoot, uh, just outside of New York in White Plains. And um, and they had raised money to do this trip and spent a lot of time and were so excited. And about three months prior to the trip, Wingfoot called and canceled uh, the trip on them because some other event came up that you know was in conflict with this trip. Well, it was devastating, as you can imagine, for, for these kids. So my dad hears the story and and at just over that pint of ale in this bar, they said, you know, we're going to fix this and we're going to get done. So my dad went back to Hilton Head and talked to the golf pro in that area. And they quickly put together a team and had the doorknock kids come to uh, to Hilton Head Island. And they did that. They that, That's how this kind of Morcott Challenge idea started. And they did that from 2005 all the way to 2018. So it effectively is, you know, uh, you know, juniors that are uh, coming to these or uh, are, are going between these two areas to have this cultural exchange. We did have, as you can imagine, we did have a, a break during the COVID year. So um, my dad is now 85. So it was getting difficult for him to organize this tournament. And in 2018, he asked if if I would do it. And I said, of course, I'd love to do that. But the caveat being, we'd need the players to come from Lake Forest and not from Hilton Head, just it would have been impossible. And I, I, I saw the opportunity to talk to Nick and talk to Wade, and everyone was really excited about this idea. So uh, so we we moved it uh, here. Just to give you an idea where Dornock is, has anybody been to Dornock here? Dornock's gotten a couple of people. So you see United Kingdom, that little star is way north in the Highlands, uh, in the Scottish Highlands. Um, and I put this larger map on there just to get a sense of how far north that is. So you're talking about it's kind of just south of Oslo, um, and but but very north in uh, in Europe. So it's way way up there. Uh, zooming in, so this is just the tip or the top of uh, Scotland. You see that um, Dornoch is is north of Inverness, 
Uh, you see where Aberdeen and Edinburgh is. So many, many people may recognize that. Uh, and St. Andrews there on the on the coast just above Edinburgh. So you get a sense of how, how far north this is. So and when our kids went over, uh, they actually played in Durness, which is right there. They played uh, around a nine hole round when we were there last year. We took a bus and they played overlooking the North Sea. So it was just this incredible, incredible experience. But I just start off with um, giving you an idea of where uh, of where these young people are coming from. Um, one of the big components of this, and I know some of you have uh, younger children or, or uh, kids that may at some someday be interested in this program. So one of the real important pieces, the, the kids stay with each other. So it's a true ex exchange program. So when the kids go from one side to the other, they stay with their, or they're mashed up with a, a, a player of similar age, not necessarily, um, you know, golfing prowess, but it's more their age and they're connected with them. And then they live in the home of the the person they're staying with um, which is really neat because Dornock is a very very small 1700 people small town in, in northern Scotland and of course you know Lake Forge is just completely different than anything uh, they've they've experienced. Dornock itself is an ancient um, ancient town it was established in sometime in the 8th century um, so it's been there a long time as you mentioned you know very small uh, most people have heard of Dornock because of the Royal Dornock Golf Course, but also because there's uh, a 13th century cathedral there, and uh, and the hotel, the most popular hotel there, is the old bishop's um, home that was from also from the 13th century. Uh, the people in Dornock are kind of mixed uh, Viking Celtic origin, so um, a lot of the towns in uh, the Highlands are actually have. Uh, Celtic or uh, Viking names because the Vikings came and actually pushed the Celts out uh, for periods of time. So a lot of the the names in that northern area are actually uh, you know from uh, the Viking area name. So it's an interesting mixed heritage. Um, so that's kind of the location. The tournament itself is a Ryder Cup style tournament. So you know just highlighting this is really much more of the cultural piece between the kids than it is the golf tournament. But of course, you know, the golf, the kids love the golf tournament and it's a big part um, of this exchange for him. So um, the Scots host the uh, the Scottish club that hosts it is the Royal Dunn Golf Club. Uh, and our uh, hosting clubs is on Wencia and Nolwood Country Clubs are the hosting clubs here. There's three tournament rounds. The first round is a two men best ball uh, match play. Uh, and then the second is an alternate shot. And the third is a singles match play uh, event. So that's kind of how the uh, how the the um, golf tournaments held. Um, if if any of you uh, know golf, you'll know Royal Dornock is you know consistently within the top ten and recently within the top five um, best you know rated best golf courses in the world. So it's it's very very well respected. Um, we were laughing because you know we're at Knollwood, we're very proud of our 1924 heritage. You know, we've been playing golf here since 1924. We're really old. Well, they were playing golf in, uh, for sure, in uh, in Dornock since 1616. So they have a, uh, it's a little different. So they, they actually have a purchase receipt uh, from the Duke of Sutherland for a, a golf club and a ball for his son to play on the Dornock uh, links. So, so they know they've been playing golf at least since 1616. They think it's probably before that. Uh, but it's it's a uh, it's the the Royal Dornock Club was founded in 1877 um, between by two guys. Uh, Alexander McCarty um, was a pioneer of golf in Northern Scotland, but he partnered with um, Dr. Hugh Gunn, who was a physician who had learned how to um, play golf in in Edinburgh. They um, they they in 1886 the the course design largely that stands today, and and uh, Nick, you can correct me on that and give a little more detail, but was originally laid out by old Tom Morris, who was in St. Andrews. So he was a champion golfer of the year, a veteran team, won, won the uh, uh, Open Championship a number of times, as did his son, young Tom Morris. So many, many of you know the history of golf, know that name, and it, um, laid out the original golf links. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, um, was a, a huge uh, supporter of the club. So Andrew Carnegie built a uh, castle that's just outside of Dornack called Skibo Castle. There's a private club there now. Has anybody been to Skibo, the Skibo Club? But it's a 
private uh, club that's around this incredible castle, but he had a large presence. He was obviously from Scotland, um, found this castle, redid it, but then because of that, played his golf at uh, Royal Dornoch and um, became a very active member. He donated a shield um, that's a, this beautiful silver shield that they they, they play, pay for. It's an open uh, competition that they play every year for since then. Actually, that happens in uh, two weeks from now is the Carnegie Shield Championship. Uh, and then the royal came from uh, King Edward VII, bestowed the club with this kind of royal designation. So ever since then, it's it's been known as the Royal Dornock Golf Club. So over on that side, it's a really great venue, wonderful experience for the kids from uh, not only being in this ancient, wonderful little town, but having just, you know, an incredible golf experience. Um, Nick, do you want to talk? I can talk a little about the Donald Ross connection. Did you want to talk about some of that? Um, so Nick's going to help us there. There's a very interesting connection between Dornock and, you know, Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, and uh, this area of Illinois. One of those connections is this, this gentleman's name that many of you recognize, Donald Ross, as one of the literally greatest um, golf course architects ever. And um, and very fascinating story. He was born in Dornock, and his, the home where he was born in stands today. You walk by, and it's here's where Donald Ross was born. But he was an apprentice under his father as a carpenter, really got interested in golf, um, left his father's uh, apprenticeship and went to St. Andrews with old Tom Morris again and learned how to make golf clubs. Uh, he did that and then uh, returned in uh, 1893 um, back to Dornock and became Dornock's uh, greenskeeper. And he really didn't like that job, but it, it really prepared him for his future life. Um, but while he was there, there was an American uh, physician that um, was a member at Dornock and spent the uh, summers in Scotland playing golf and recognized this young man as somebody who had a lot of potential and uh, invited him uh, in 1900 to move to the United States. He gave him $7. <laughs> so he gave Donald Ross $7 and he, Donald Ross found his way across the ocean uh, to New York and he uh, redesigned Oakley Country Club in 1900 in Watertown, Boston, in, in, uh, just outside of Boston. So he did a wonderful job with that. And, and, and you know, this house, it's so serendipitous, one of the members at this club had happened to just buy, he was a developer and happened to just buy property in this place called Pinehurst, North Carolina. So he had all this property in Pinehurst and he wanted to develop a golf course there. So he approached this guy, Donald Ross, and said, I want you to go design this entire Pinehurst golf resort. And many of you know Pinehurst number two and a number of the golf courses now. And, and so Donald Ross um, did that. He uh, moved out and uh, and developed Pinehurst and really became known for link style golf in America. And, and uh, as a result, designed courses all over this country and has been copied and just recognized as one of the top golf course design designers ever. So he is also a great golfer. He finished fifth in the um, 1903 U.S. Open. So he's also a great golfer. His, his uh, brother won the uh, U.S. Open in 1905. So just to give you an idea of this connection locally, Exmoor, Donald Ross, um, Old Elm, Bobble Link, Indian Hill, Beverly, Evanston, Skokie, Northmore, Calumet, Ravislow Park, and, and LaGrange are all Donald Ross courses. So he he came from Royal Dornock right, right in and amongst us and uh, had a huge impact in this area. So, so that's one of the connections. Another connection is NOLA Club, our first golf pro, our very first golf pro in 1924 was from Dornock. It was a, a golfer from Dornock. And do you want to add some some to that, Nick? Because you, you, I know you guys have some, you know, Scotland history here as well. Well, I mentioned he was uh, Trevor's great friend for Old Tom and his father was Old Tom for years. So, um, you know, Old Tom was, you know, the grandfather of golf. Just where so many folks, so many of these young folks, the friends that are in learned so much about golf. And that's where she knew him now. Claude is golf. He learned how to be was in school in the 1870s and moved to 16. Um, so it makes perfect sense that so many of these young folks kind of all in the same group with their mentor for so many years. So, so we, have, we have a strong connection with, with uh, St. Andrews, connection with Nola, connection with uh, with Dornick and Sicily. Yeah, it seems like such a small world. But this town was built by a player, Scott, in our first 
um, police chief was the Scottish immigrant, and our first fire chief was the Scottish immigrant. So there's just a really strong Scottish connection here in Lake Orville. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's kind of neat that these kids are coming over here, and we have this really uh, wonderful connection with uh, with that area. So I was going to talk to you now a little more specifically about um, this, the Morcott Challenge itself. So as I mentioned, the tournament started in 2005. So the 18th year this year, we missed two because of COVID. So this year would have been the 16th uh, year uh, of, of running the, the uh, tournament. It's an alternate schedule, so every other year. So for example, the kids were just here from Scotland. Next year, we'll go over to Scotland and vice versa. So it just runs like that. Um, and in 2019, is when I mentioned uh, that we changed this this kind of uh, uh, the location. So um, real quick, there's the founder is my dad. There's Woody. So um, he's he's the guy who uh, started this. This is actually from this year. You see some of the kids uh, playing playing behind him. Uh, here's a team. And while I put this up, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about more personally about what this experience is for the young people. So you'll see the um, US team members here on the left and, and the team members on the right. One of the goals of the program is that if a young person wants to do it, we ask them to commit to two years at least. And we'll probably have some people do it for two years, some people do it for four years. The idea is once you meet somebody or connect with a, a young person from Dornock, is trying to give time to develop a relationship with that person so that, uh, you know, our goal would be over time, you know, this develops into somebody that your son or daughter would you know stay in touch with and they might develop a friendship with somebody you know across the ocean for uh you know for a lifelong friendships and we've seen that happen so there's um you know i would say probably more than half of the young people so the the kind of oldest people now are in their 30s that still stay in touch with their the player that they stayed with for those two years um uh and and that's kind of one of the goals of the program is really connect these people with this group right here in particular, all everyone you see here except for Luke Ferrans played last year in uh, Scotland. So we had this wonderful connection. And when these kids got off the bus from O'Hare, you know, the kind of was hugs and how are you doing? And literally within about 15 minutes, the, the Scottish kids were unpacking their golf clubs from their travel bags and they're headed out to the golf course. You know, they've just gotten off the plane and off this bus and they all wanted to get out on the golf course with their with their friend, basically. And um, and throughout the the whole rounds, what we're seeing is when you, when we first started this, the first time we did it, you'd have kind of the click of the Americans would be walking together and the Scots would be walking together. And within two to three days, that changed, and you'll just see these these kids intermingling and walking together, and they're tr really developing true friendships. They do a lot of things aside from the golf. We set up two two cultural days. So, for example, this year we took on Monday we took the whole group, all sixteen kids, down in the city of uh, Chicago. Uh, we walked down to the Millennium Park, showed them that area, went over to Navy Pier, jumped on the architectural tour uh, boat went around the architectural tour boat, um, they grabbed some lunch in Navy Pier and we headed back, but they were able to get an experience of the of the city. The year before in 2019, we went to the to the aquarium and, and also walked through Millennium Park and Buckingham Fountain. And so each year we're trying to do something neat. Um, we took them to, to Cops in, in uh, Wisconsin. If, if anybody had been there, it's a custard you know place that's just a classic old custard place. Uh, and then they also went to parking and they went to movie together and just did some some things that are outside of golf together as a group. Uh, and then many of you may know they had an evening here as well um, that was hosted by Wednesday, which was phenomenal. They had some chipping and putting games and had dinner out on the back patio with the night of the storm where they had this beautiful lightning show behind them and just had a great experience. So, so there is quite a bit of or, organized activity for them, but then there's time also where the kids went on their own to the beach. Uh, we did have a cookout at the beach with them and just just did things on their own to again develop develop these connections. Um, there is kind of a uh, code that we ask them. Uh, there's no drinking or anything like that. So um, you know the 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 kids are great. We've never had a problem with that, and um, they're very respectful. If anybody uh, ran into these uh, 16 kids, they're just wonderful people and and super nice uh, young people. The coach is Gary Dingwall, is the head pro uh, at um, Royal Darnock. Wonderful person. He's a very accomplished golfer. He was a, a, a very successful amateur golfer in Scotland. 
um, and, and played in a lot of Scottish Opens and uh, European uh, tournaments. Um, I was, he lost, uh, let's see, he lost um, three and two to Sergio Garcia, so that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, he took Sergio to, to the last couple holes. Uh, Gary Bethune is the, the uh, vice captain, uh, which I guess would be the, our equivalent would be the vice chairman of the, of the club. Um, he came as well. And Gail McKay is the mother of uh, one of the female players that came as a female chaperone. So great group. Uh, and of course, we had Wade and Nick as our, our coaches. Um, we do try to keep this co-ed. So um, if you have a daughter or if any, if you know of you know, women in the club or young women in the club that are interested, we love supporting women's golf. So we're, we're trying to, to keep that going. Uh, probably the best, well, we, we had some uh, great golfers in our group as well, but Rihanna McKay, the Scots uh, female golfer, is phenomenal. She went to IMG last year and was probably going to play collegiate golf in the state somewhere. So, um, so it's really good. On, on the golf side, we had handicaps from a plus two to a fourteen. So you don't have to be, you know, some star golfer. That's really not what it's about at all. So you just have to have a handicap. You know, as long as you have a a decent handicap that that uh, puts you. Uh, you know, in the game. So we just need somebody that got a handicap. And and more importantly, it's we're looking for people, uh, young people that are, you know, kind, respectful, and are interested in an exchange program, something like like this. Um, so that's um, I'll show you some pictures here in a sec. Let me let me just show you. There's there's the group. So this is at uh, Aaron Hills. I think I mentioned the first round uh, was at Aaron Hills. Ironically, we went up to Aaron Hills on that horrible uh storm stormy day we had here um that we heard about we didn't we didn't see any of it somehow we missed that up in wisconsin it went, there was a big storm that went north and a big storm that went south really forced and we were right in that gap so you see the day we got um i think that was on tuesday um it was it was a, or no that was actually on wednesday it was a great day up there so the obviously the scottish teams in uh, gray the u.s teams in white uh, in this picture and uh, not standing obviously next to their uh, their mates, but but that's the group. Um, here's another picture at, at Cops, but this is the kind of thing you know they just kind of hang around and ha just had fun together. Um, we did have uh, what was called a we called it a one club challenge. They started this in Scotland. So when we were over there, um, we do have a formal dinner uh, once during the week. Uh, where it's coat and tie and the kids dress up and e each uh, young person gets up in front of the group and the parents of the host team are invited and the coaches are invited so there's you know somewhere between you know 30 40 people in this room and uh, each young person gets up in a coat and tie and introduces themselves and tells everybody a little bit about themselves and why they like golf and what it means to them and, and you know what this experience has been like for them so they they have to give kind of a 30 second to two minute, um, you know, speech, if you will. But, um, you know, we help them prepare for that. But it gives them an opportunity to stand up in front of a group and speak to everybody. And that's where why you see everybody dressed up. Uh, this is Angus McFall, this young man here is um, he was one of our golfers. This was his actually third time. He was just a little dude when he came over. His brother was in the program and he came over with his brother in uh, 2019. And he's this was his last year. He's a first year student in college um, this year studying finance. But you look at him, he's got that, he's decked out in that three piece suit and <laughs> he's got his tie on. And uh, when we were over in Scotland, what, what they did was after that dinner, we had that formal dinner, each kid got to take one golf club. We went over to Royal Darnock. They lined up a tee shot and they played, I think they ended up playing five or six holes with their suit and ties on in one club. And over there, it stays light out until almost midnight. So they just kept going and playing playing this one club challenge, they called it. We didn't know anything about that. So when we came, when we had them over, we said, okay, we have to do something like that. So we had a closer to the pin competition over at Knollwood. Uh, and each each uh, young person got a ball. So we had, uh, you know, 16 balls that were hit up on the, on the this is the, uh, when you recognize that, the fourth tee right in front of our clubhouse. So we had all these diners out there and the kids were out there hitting the, in their uh, dresses and their and their coat and tie, which is really fun. And afterwards, they all walked up and uh, picked up their ball and the close to the to the pin one something. But again, I, th this picture means the most to me because this is this is what happens is they're, they're they're walking together. They're getting a selfie, you know, 
they're, they're just developing these, these friendships that, that is really what the whole program is about fundamentally, is introducing kids from completely different cultures, throwing them into this situation that's very different and foreign to them. Uh, because I tell you, our, our kids going over there and living with these people from a small town, I mean, most of these kids' parents are, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a plumber, it's a shop owner, it's a greenskeeper, it's a golf pro. You know, they're, they're people that are working in a, in a small town there's no major industry in in uh, in Dornock. so these are sm smaller town people and it's great for our kids to see that and to have that experience and have the small town experience and then likewise you know the kids that come over here uh it's a wonderful experience for them as well to have this almost the opposite in scotland in Dornock, they have um they're, they're i think just over 100 kids in their junior program and this Morcott Challenge thing for them is a huge deal. Like it's a massive deal who gets to be on this team and who gets to go to America. Um, so it's a big, big deal for these kids to, to come over. And, and they have a pretty, you know, they have to meet three, four times a year and they practice together and uh, the pro is training them. And um, so it's a really nice way for them to encourage their junior program. Um, we hope that we develop, it's not gonna be the same, the same level because we don't have junior programs that are that size. But we'd love to use this program between our two clubs to encourage junior golfers and for our for our younger kids to say, hey, that's really cool. I'd love to go play on a team that gets to go play against against Scotland. We we give these kids uniforms. So every when we showed up, you know, khaki shorts and your blue shirt, and it's got a you know American flag on it, or so they they get these uniforms and really feel like, wow, this is, you know, it's not the same as the Ryder Cup, but and we they get announced on the first tee and everything. It's really, really kind of fun. So we're really trying to encourage there. Yeah. When uh, Doug and I and Wade uh, were sitting in the room, we were talking about the outcomes. And there were, you know, this, you know, we're not sounding people, but we had this like funny thought. We're like, well, should we need uniforms or not? Because I mean, we don't want to look like all these like North Shore rich kids coming out there with our, you know, our five thousand dollars sets of clothes yeah. and our polo shirts and all this stuff. And so we, we really didn't do it. And then all of a sudden, all the kids were already showing up for the old floors, the old bags, the old great to have bags. And yeah, yeah, like we were. We are. But... They all have bags. They have they have royal door neck bags. So we're, you know, we're like, we're, where did we show? We're like, man, they're not doing this again. We don't have team bags. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they they pull off stops, don't they? They, they, they do. They, yeah. they, they go well beyond. Yeah. It's great. Well, they, you know, that's the one thing I've said a few times. They've got a, you know, 15 plus year to start um, yeah. to kind of fine tune how they do their program and create the, the excitement and create the pipeline. And we're just kind of getting started. So obviously, it's it's already, you know, it's already awesome. But dude, there's you see these little things like this, these little touches, you're like, you know, we don't for that. Yeah. I mean, for that. So we're getting there. It's 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 just so special. But there, there's no doubt about it. It is a big, big, Big deal for these kids. So just looking at it, I see Rihanna there. I mean, she's never been on an airplane before. Oh, Aaron. No, Aaron had. Yeah. Well, um, there goes Aaron now. Yeah. Aaron, uh, she's a horse, the little Marty Eagle. You know, less school and just wants to work in yeah. her. And her nuts are trained. That's yeah. what she wants. She joined the Air Force, too. She's starting the Air Force in like Good. six months. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. And it's just a, it's such an incredible thing. So many different personalities, just like our kids. It's it's awesome. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's one uh, Anything else to add to you just from the week that would be interesting that I so I, I think just a couple of things about you know talking about the size of the town supporting their people. Um and that I twice I think that the town is so connected to that golf club and in, in many ways, you know, you don't know if the town would exist without the golf club and, and vice versa. And it's just so important uh that the club does, you know. I, Pre COVID, the club, the golfers would do a little over 26,000 rounds in a year. Um, and over half of those rounds are visitor tournaments. Um, now it's after COVID, I think last year, I think the opinion report said that they did about 18,000 rounds and they got 5,000 for visitor tournaments. So they still aren't getting the visitor traffic that, that they got pre COVID. So um, that's such a substantial, substantial part of that community. Um, the the golf course about an hour south of Denver and it's Castle Seward. And when Castle Seward was built, it was really supposed to help build. I mean, from Dornick and what's happened, unfortunately, is now people tend to stay in, in Inverness and play kind of up there on day trips and not really stay in town. So if you've heard this story about this proposed golf course called Coolings, 
Um, it's a really important condition. If they can get it passed, they're really helping. Economy. That's Kohler, isn't it? That's doing that. Uh, it's uh, Kaiser. It's and Kaiser. And uh, Ron, Stokey, who's yeah. involved in it. So it's a core picture of all of us. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that with the kids, and you know, I was asking them today, some of the kids are just going to play around. They think it's going to happen. They, they didn't say yes or no, they just said they hope that it happens. So, Great. you know, coming from a small town that I, that I did, I had you know, 25 hundred or Um, I know it's a very different. It's obviously a very different culture. Community means a lot. Uh, there's a little bit of a different thing when you're a small town that's home. Um, we have a great community here, and we're very fortunate to live where we live. Um, and that's uh, so, something that's so important. We really press into the kids, especially when they go across. And I, I, I try to think about what my novel life towards here and would say, like, basically, going to stay at the Ritz in Cabo and get there and it's the holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to really understand and appreciate it. So the expectations versus appreciation. Um, and our, our, fortunately, our kids have done a really good job after their first trip over there last year. So yeah, um, that, it's just, it's really cool. And I think, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, when the kids all got off the bus, they were all like in a yeah. high five and went down and they showed up with Nola on Sunday night. And it's really cool to watch that. It's like they, like their you know, family had just come home and they're yeah. you know, ready for the week. So it's it's cool. It's, it, it's fun to see the interactions and um, to hear so many of the different stories of where these kids come from. And one of the things we talked about in the event the other night, you know, these kids are all members of the club. I mean, it's not like we have here in our, our country club lifestyle in, in, uh, in the States. I and mean, it's not mom and dad join the club and the kids just have free reign. These kids have to go through the membership process and become members of the club. There's 50 junior members that are championship members. So there's two types of memberships where there's three there's a social, but they have a championship membership where you can play the big course and they have what's called the steering membership, which is kind of the waiting period. You have that time you can play the second course, which is the steering course. There's 152 junior members that are steering members, and there's 50 kids that are championship members. I'm sure that 50 is counted 50. Uh, and so these, you know, there's a couple of one kids, and I can't remember which one his parents are going to play golf. Yeah, sure. that's Jamie. Yeah, so yeah, he's the he's the captain of their team yeah, right here. And his parents know he play golf. Yeah, and so he went himself and got lessons and joined the golf club. Yeah, so uh it's a great process. So it's not there's no family members that you join a club or whatever. Yeah. So, so it's a it's a pretty interesting process. They're just all so and they're just so well mannered. Just they appreciate everything coming over here, and so this could be the only time they ever come to stay. So it's the one we found into this strip. So it's it's special for all of us that are part of it over here, just as much as you know, over there. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions just about about uh, the program at all, or um, door knock, or the course, or and any place we probably any course in Scotland with Nick here. <laughs> I know he's been over quite a bit. I was a lot about that, but uh, so yes, well, it's such a great program. I was just curious: are there any thoughts of expanding it, having more golfers involved, yeah. that sort of thing? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, the so the junior club at Royal Dornock, which is run by Gary Dingwall, is really they're make, trying to make that kind of the premier junior program in Scotland, like something that almost all Scotland looks at and says, this is how you do it. And they're serious about it. So part of going to IMG last year, Gary took um, two of the players, uh, Rihanna McKay uh, and Alex Innes, um, these two kids to Florida. The IMG is that uh, sports school, basically, but, you know, for top athletes. And part of what they were doing there was learning how they run their program and how they're coaching junior golfers and other athletes as well. And, um, Gary Dingwell show up, and the first guy I met was Kirby Smart. You know, many of you know he's a famous football head football coach from Georgia, and uh, he got to sit down with Kirby Smart and talk about coaching and how to coach and motivate young people. And so they're really bringing some of these ideas to their golf program, um, and because of that, their golf program is expanding. Interesting enough, and again, unlike um, one of our challenges, we're we're pay, taking our juniors from our clubs. They don't have to do that. Um, you know, Gary goes up to the high school and grade school and teaches a course about golf during the school year and then those kids come down and join the junior program and and so they have a funnel of junior golfers and as nick was saying the life in these communities run around their golf club like truly that's in if you're in doorknock everybody knows what's going on at the golf club and 
uh, you know, husbands and wives and grandparents and basically everybody plays golf. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a big thing. So they're going to have a lot of kids. And one of the questions is how, how do we manage that? And we're going to try to help them more so than us create some kind of process of how do you find a team or pick the team. But one of those thoughts was you could see a day where there's going to be more than one, you know, they might have more kids interested in coming over than one team. I don't know that we would do that unless we really goose our junior programs. But, um, you know, as Nick had mentioned, it's early for us. So we're not sure what the interest in the clubs are and with, with the young people in the club. So we're going to figure that out. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be out of the question if, uh, you know, if there's more people interested that this, the size of the team either increases or, you know, do you repeat this with other clubs or other locations? So it's a great question and we don't, we don't know the answer, but I know one of their struggles on their side is choosing this team. It breaks Gary's heart, you know, the, the coach of the doorknock team, because he has to tell some kids no. And for them, you know, it feels like a life altering decision for them because part of their, their goal over there is to open the eyes of the doorknock kids to see what is out there, to see that I could play college golf in America. You know, that that's actually a possibility. I could do that. And for a lot of these kids, they don't even see that, you know, because they haven't left the community or that area. So so they're really motivated to try to do this. Well, those kids, those kids there, the, the Scottish juniors will go back and they'll meet with the little kids and tell them about the trip and what they did and all those little kids and want, want to go. So so we're going to see where it goes. But um, and, and likewise, with our clubs, we're going to part part of it. And, and thank you for inviting me to give this talk as part of it is just talking about it and getting the word out. And many of you have kids or grandkids that might be interested in this kind of a thing. And we'll, we'll just see what the interest is. But we're hoping there'll be great interest in and it will help um, forward our junior programs too, that we could have kids that say, I want to play golf in Scotland and, and go do that. But it's a really good question. Yeah. Anything else? I know it's not a big question. Yeah, go ahead. What was the range of the Scottish kids' handicaps? This, well, it's interesting you ask that because the Scottish kids' handicaps are, are they come from terms where they put the ball in the hole. Mm -hmm. And so their, their handicaps are higher from 14 to, I think their lowest handicap is a two. Um, but if you if you look at the golf, they're 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 relatively evenly matched. We had we gave up a lot of strokes. We got our butts kicked over there last year. We lost by five strokes over there, and then they lost by five strokes here. So there there is a huge advantage. And from a golf perspective, for our juniors to go play golf in Scotland, you, if you notice the flight of the the junior Scottish golfers, flight the ball down. Like and they they have a lot of shaped shots and you know they have low pitches and they'll putt from thirty years yards off the green you know they just do stuff that our kids would never think. I mean our kids are flying the green. They want to fly a flag and stick it and spin it back and and you know when you go to Scotland that doesn't play. I mean you cannot play like that. So last year we were actually quite close going into the final day and we got our kids around and we're like okay everybody you know you played here all week you can't flight the ball to the hole, the golf hole. You have to play everything in front and run it up, you know, and see what the Scottish kids are doing and, and be creative out here. So what happens? First of all, driver, you know, and they're trying to hit, hit it as far as they can. And then wedge, I'm going to spin one right in there and they're knocking them over the green. And they have these, you know, little short shots back in the whole day. And Wade, Wade and, and Nick couldn't come as you got sick, but Wade and I were like, oh, my Lord. And so the whole day, our kids were in trouble chipping back. And they wouldn't they wouldn't stop. They wouldn't hit the ball from the hole. It was driving us crazy. So, But they learned that lesson. And I think um, one thing we're going to do going back next year, Nick and Wade are going to work with the kids on, on playing a different style of golf and be a little more creative and hitting and flighting the ball down and learning different shots. And I think our kids learned that lesson, you know, last year, you know, when they, they came back. But it was, it was funny because, you know, they're – they get out there and they get all amped up. They're going to win the tournament. <laughs> and they just did their own thing. But it was super fun. Well, um, if there are there any other questions, I can hang out for a little bit afterwards, too, if anybody has any questions more personal to them or their family. But thank you so much for the opportunity. And, David, thank you for inviting us out here. Nick, thanks for coming up. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, and yeah, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Scott. That was fantastic. And again, what a great program. Um, and 
uh, we'd love to have you back here two years from now and yeah, talk sure. about it again. And hopefully, hopefully the players will be with yeah. us too. We'll yeah, set we it up at a better time when they be great. haven't left for Scotland. Yeah, so. for sure. That'd be great. So thank, thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And uh, we have a couple of things for you. You play a lot of I haven't played there for a while. Yeah. It's been many years. Uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, a good thing. Right. But I spent a lot of time in the year. Which is amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Playing the fairways, right? And then kind of look at the music. Yes. So the music was kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. And it's a little longer. Oh, interesting. And I just noticed somewhere the other day, I was watching my son play and I was playing, but I was sort of thinking. And I think 16 and below are 18 holders, and the average guy can hit his own balls. Yeah, a minute or two old where you can. That's how I'm thinking that's how that's a bunker. Yeah, but you're saying it's all. Yeah, where they where they pinch the bunkers. Um, do you know, David, if I should shut this down? Uh, yeah. Should I just turn? If you it know, off? if you know how, if not, yeah, I can, I can have uh, Julie do it. I didn't know if she would come on. Well, if she's not here, I better. Is it your computer? Or no, it's hers. Time? Yeah, if she's still here. She's yeah, she's definitely here. I can ask her. Yeah, I don't want to ask her. Because she, I know she was recording. So she, I know she has to save that file. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For these gifts. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't Well, this is for ones you care. It's Caribbean. I we have this whole nice center table. I'm just going to go down and 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 go down this best all thanks to me money from saying, Oh, you're kidding? No, man, I've been missing. It's so great. It's the same thing. This was a lot of the whole lot of these. Wait, Doc will do the video for the way more than the way work. I just got to show all the way. It's fun. Oh, right. We're going to be parents to help out. Well, I talked to a couple of parents the other day. I said, Is it your parents? Just kind of the. I was saying, Right now, it's kind of. Yeah. Right. 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 I get the sense like in the next time I kind of next time in the last year, but let the kids will not take over the parents' nests in the back. Let the kids kind of do their own thing. Right. Um, so I was just in the sort of this kind of thing. No, it's great to be involved. Just for me. Right. It's really like that. Well, then I'm going to spell it. So it was happy. Oh, man. I'll say what I mean. It's 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 You all have this. And it's yeah. Oh, they do. I Kids and little kids.